What's going on tonight, guys? Um, coming at you with episode two of uh, Midnight Sessions. So I'm fooling around here with some uh, plugins and loops and stuff in Logic and came up with another, I don't know, maybe it's kind of silly, but a um, little jam, little ditty that I tentatively am calling um, Cool Groove Conga Jam. I don't know, let's check it out. Come along for the ride, see what you think. Let me know in the comments if this sucks and I should scrap it all. Thanks. Okay, so obviously this song is still a work in progress. It's got a lot, uh, needs a lot of work, <laughs> essentially. But, um, you know, if you get inspiration or you, you know, something just pops in your head and you want to jam to it, you know, go for it. And uh, if you've got uh, a DAW of some kind of recording software, go ahead and lay some tracks down. Even if it's just, you know, rough cuts and it's a mess, at least you'll remember some of the phrasing or the groove or the licks that you had, you know, at that moment in time, that inspiration that you had, just, just get it down so you can, you know, save it for later. I've got a lot of projects like that right now. I probably have 10 to 15 different Logic projects that are just bits and pieces incomplete. But since I purchased the computer this year, well, in tw late 2020, and uh, just started learning how to use Logic Pro and all that stuff, I'm having a blast with it. It's a lot of fun. I never recorded music before this. I mean, not really. I probably put stuff down on cassette tape 20 years ago, right? Remember cassette tapes? Young kids? Probably not. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> but I figure we'll break down one of the licks that's in this little solo that I just did in this conga jam. And um, it's not extremely technical, but for some reason it gives, I kind of get tripped up on it. And it's really simple when you play it slow. It's just this part right here. It's... Um, it's all kind of just upstrokes with rest strokes in between. Uh, if you're not familiar with what rest strokes are, it's basically just, just catching on the next string but not plucking that second string. You're kind of just resting on it for momentary, you know, just a fraction of a second. Um, I've never been too good at those. But yeah, this lick here has given me, I don't know, it's given me a little bit of an issue because it's just... To play it smoothly, you know, what I, the notes I hear in my head, that's, that's how I write the stuff I write. Um, it's basically I hear something and then I just try to figure out how to convey that on the fretboard. So it then ended up being this lick right here. And it's just, again, it's not very technical. It's just... But I like to pick with as much economy of motion as possible. The descending part is all upstrokes. And then when I go back ascending... I'm alternate picking. You can do it any way you want to. This is just what seemed to work best for me naturally. It's just kind of muscle memory and whatever works for you ergonomically, you know, whatever works best for you to pick a particular phrase. Um, use whatever technique works best. Whether it's all upstrokes, all downstrokes, 
uh, alternate picking, cross picking, which we can go over in another video. Cross picking is something I'm just getting into now. I'm trying to kind of explore that avenue. Cross picking is, if you don't know, it's kind. It's what they use in bluegrass when they play like banjo and stuff like that, and mandolin. They're kind of alternate picking as they're changing strings, um, and it allows them to play basically <laughs> any um, any phrase of notes that they can conceive. That's difficult for me to do. I'm working on it. You know, we'll do another video on that sometime. But again, this phrase here, just this one little lick is, is, I don't know, I get caught up on it. I just want to kind of work on it and get it tight, get it a little bit better. See, it's sloppy. So it's, it's a hammer-on pull-off. Then three descending notes uh, with upward picks. And then it's, um... Those last four or five notes are just all alternate pick for me. It's and I slide out of it and go into the main phrase of the solo, which is that whole thing. It just takes a lot of practice, you know? You just have to do it over and over and over and over until you're satisfied with how tight you can do it or how, how well you can keep it in time. A good practice tip is, you know, put on a movie, something that you've seen before, sit on your couch, don't even plug in, and just play for two hours for the entire movie. Um, you know, take breaks now and then, stretch your hand out and stuff. But if you're trying to get something new down or something that's different or unique, something something different from what you're normally used to playing, just meditate on the phrase for a little while. You know, then when it comes time to record it or play it live with, with a band or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, you want to feel confident and you kind of want to have the muscle memory. So that's why it's good to practice more difficult phrases like that. If you're trying to improve on a technical level, just do a phrase over and over again, like that Paul Gilbert lick that everybody knows that wants to learn alternate picking. It's <laughs> Try to get tight at it. Um, once you're comfortable with picking it and you don't have to look at your hands to see what you're doing, just set a metronome, you know, real slow. I don't know. 75, 80 beats per minute and just... <laughs> until you can get it up to speed. So, I thought I'd break down one of the licks that's in this little solo here because otherwise, you know, what are we here for if we're not sharing information? So, once again, tonight's session has been brought to you by Bourbon. It's a weeknight, but who cares because, you know, Lockdown and all that stuff, where am I going? Anyways, until next time. Oh, if you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. I generally am not somebody who's going to ask people to do that, but since I'm brand new and I've got like 10 subscribers, uh, it really would help me out. You know, keep me motivated to keep doing these videos and hopefully the content will improve, as will the production value. Got some new lighting in here, got the new camera, got another lens on the way. We're going to try to level it up. You know what I mean? So until next time, stay safe. See ya.